My name is Sarah Haig, and I'm a doctor of physical therapy and author of Understanding and Treating Incontinence. I'd like to take a couple minutes to explain in a very simple way how does our bladder work when everything is working well. So first some anatomy is we have the bladder. So the bladder is kind of like a balloon, and then this little bit at the bottom is the urethra, which is how the urine will exit the body. Around the bladder is the detrusor. So the detrusor is a muscle, but it's a smooth muscle. So it's not really a muscle that we can work out, make stronger. It's not a muscle that gets weak. Just when everything's working well, it relaxes when it's supposed to and contracts when it's supposed to. And one of the things that the detrusor will do is as our bladder starts to fill up with urine, is that detrusor muscle will start to stretch. And this is where we can start getting our urge to go to the bathroom. Some of the things that are helping keep us continent as the bladder fills with urine are urinary sphincters, which are round muscles around the urethra, and also our pelvic floor, and then creating the, the rest of our intra-abdominal cavity are our abdominal muscles. So I want you to imagine wrapping all the way around, and then our breathing diaphragm up here at the top. So when people are talking about strengthening their core, any, doing anything like that, all of this should be involved in that, in that exercise and in that creating that stability. So to move back to what's happening in our bladder, how are we maintaining continence, is our kidneys, which are located up kind of down at the bottom of our rib cage in the back part of our body, is we're creating urine at a fairly consistent rate and at about 150 milliliters, we're going to have enough stretch in that detrusor, we're going to have enough input that you kind of get a, an urge to go. Now, because our bladders can hold four to 600 milliliters of fluid, we can pretty much ignore this all the time. Sometimes people start to pay more attention to that first urge, but most of us can carry on with our day. And then our kidneys will continue to produce urine. And there will get to a point where that detrusor is stretched enough to give you another urge that will let you know it's a little more important that we attend to normal physiology and go to the bathroom. I think it's very important to, to emphasize that normal is getting to the bathroom or an appropriate place and removing your clothes without panicking and without running and without leaking is normal physiology. So when, once we get to the appropriate place, get into the appropriate position, you're gonna relax the pelvic floor, and then that detrusor muscle will kind of help empty that bladder all the way. So it's kind of this reciprocal relationship between the pelvic floor and that detrusor muscle. And then once your bladder has emptied, you can get up and your pelvic floor regains some of that muscle tone. You shouldn't walk around clenching your pelvic floor all day, but it kind of helps create that pressure again and our detrusor relaxes so that it can start filling up again. Now it's also normal after we void to have what's called a post void residual. Now again, when everything is working well, this post void residual can be up to 50 milliliters. And that's important to know because if you try to go again, you might be able to, but it's completely normal to have a little bit left and that's fine because remember the main job of this bladder is to store urine until it's time to void. And once you're done voiding, the kidneys will continue to produce urine and the bladder will fill back up. When the system isn't working well, that's when we experience things like frequency, urgency, or any of the different types of incontinence. So if you are experiencing any of those things, you can learn more in my book, or you can consult with your physician or a pelvic floor physical therapist to see what you can help do to restore um, normal operating systems in your body.